Do you ever look at suits like this where you've got king queen 10 9 to 5 opposite 4 low? You're missing the ace jack. You're like, all right, let's lead up to the king, and you lose to the ace. And the next time you get down to the south hand, you lead again. And you're like, should I put in the queen? Should I finesse? Who's got the jack? I don't know. And you just choose something. Or maybe you've got a suit like this where you're missing the ace, the queen, and the nine. You lead up to the jack and it loses to the queen. You get back to your south hand. You lead up towards the king and it loses to the ace. You get back to the north hand. You then lead low towards the 10 and the 8. You haven't seen the 9. You're like, all right, uh, do I go the 10 or do I go the 8? And you just choose one. Or do you? I want to just give you some knowledge that you can sort of use on a broad spectrum of different suit combinations without actually having to memorize every individual suit combination. And this all stems from uh, a saying that you've already probably heard. Eight ever, nine never. But I want to flesh it out so that you can use it on suit combinations like that and have the probabilities in your favor and just win extra tricks just because you know the probabilities without knowing every single suit combination. And there's not a lot of memory work for this as well. So this is nice and simple. So uh, first of all, for people that haven't uh, heard of eight ever, nine never, let's imagine we've got eight cards and we're missing the queen. We've got something like ace, king, jack, ten, um, and we've got eight of them. Or we've got nine cards still missing the queen. Should we finesse the queen or should we play for the queen to drop? Now the saying here, eight ever, nine never, is talking about whether or not you should finesse. So with eight cards, it suggests that you should finesse the queen. Whereas if you've got nine cards, it wants you to play for the drop. Now, what you can also do is expand this up to 10 and 11 cards and also down to seven and six cards. So there's a common pattern here that you'll see. So first of all, uh, if you're curious, um, with the eight ever, nine never, never's like a bit of an overstatement here. Uh, while you should play for the queen to the drop and not finesse, the drop's only 2% better. Now, 2%'s a lot in the long run, but if you've got some good information to sway you away from that, you should take that. Whereas choosing should you play for the queen to drop in an eight card fit versus finesse, that's actually 19% better to actually finesse. Uh, so you, you basically always take the finesse. You need really good information to sway away from that. Now, I'm not expecting you to remember all these percentages, but I want you to try and remember what's generally better. If we're ever playing for the drop, it's only a small percentage increase. So if you've got some good information, you can sway away from it. If you're choosing to finesse, it's usually significantly better and you should go for that in those cases. But uh, what can we do if we've got 11 card fits or uh, seven card fits? So if we move up, up to 10 or 11, what I wanna do is also change the honor we're talking about that we're missing from the queen to the king. And if we have seven or six, we change it from the queen down to the jack. So the question that I pose here is if we've got 11 cards missing the king, or 10 cards missing the king, should we finesse or should we drop in either of those? And also, what about if we've got seven cards missing the jack or six cards missing a jack? This might look like ace, king, queen, 10, opposite three low or opposite two low. So uh, which of these should we finesse and which should we actually play for the drop in? And there's a pretty common pattern here. So uh, basically with all the odd amount of cards that we've got, we usually want to play for the drop. So with 11 missing the king, we want to play for the drop. But 10 missing the king, we want to take the finesse. With seven missing the jack, we want to play for the drop. And six missing the jack, we want to take the finesse. So um, common pattern here, and basically you just need to remember, uh, eight ever, nine never. And if we move it up to 10 or 11, the odd ones, we still drop, we never finesse, or the even numbers, we do finesse, okay? So that's the common pattern that I want you to try and remember here. And it's worth noting that, uh, let's say we don't have the quite correct on, like we've got 11 cards missing the queen or the jack, um, or even 10 cards missing the queen or the jack. If that missing honor isn't as high as the king, it will always be playing for the drop. Similarly, if the missing honor is higher than what we're talking about, let's say uh, seven or six cards missing the queen or the king, it'll always be finesse. Um, similarly, if we look at eight or nine, if it's uh, eight or nine cards missing the king, we want to finesse. Seven cards, we want to uh, play for the drop. So 
Uh, that's how you can do that. You just want to remember what's generally better than the other. You don't need to remember the exact percentages here, but hopefully you can see this pattern here. Now, how can we actually use that in a different situation? So here I've got uh, two suits. Both of these, we've got uh, nine cards. Uh, we've got spades, we've got nine cards missing the queen. In hearts, we've got nine cards missing the eight and the jack. And here, we know this spade suit, we know nine cards missing the queen, we want to play for the queen to drop. Uh, but what about in hearts? What if we led the four hearts and then we put in the king? Um, what would we actually do there if east won the ace? We get back to the south hand and we lead up again. Should we finesse the jack or should we play for the jack to drop? Now, what I want you to realize is these two suit combinations are extremely similar. So here, let's talk about um, we play the five of spades and we put in the ace. So we take one of those. And similarly in hearts, we lead the four of hearts and we put up the king and that loses to the ace. Okay, so for both of these, we've played one round of the suit. Okay, uh, the first one, we won our trick. The second one, uh, we lost the king to the ace. But from here, if you think of how many cards the suits have remaining, well, the opponent started with four cards in both, and they're down to two in both. In both of these, we've got the top card, and then we're missing one under it, and that's it. And our question is, should we play for that to drop, or should we finesse? And in both of these cases, we want to play for the missing honor to drop. So again, let's just go back. So again, this is what the suits originally looked like. And I want you to understand that you can actually transpose these. So after you play one heart to the king and it loses to the ace, this is identical probability wise to this suit. So here with nine cards missing the queen or nine cards missing the ace and jack, after we lose one to the opponents, they are the same. So with this, we want to play for the jack of hearts to drop. We want to play for the queen of spades to drop. So another way of thinking about it is uh, if you play one top card and lose a trick to the opponents, so king to the ace, we can effectively just drop down one honor in that chart. So instead of it being uh, nine cards missing the queen, we've lost an honor to the opponents. We've knocked out one of theirs. Uh, now it's gone from the queen we're missing to the jack and they're equivalent here. So here we can look at these suit combinations and go, okay, we want to play for the jack to drop here. If for instance, I took away uh, the eight of hearts and we took away the nine of spades and we've got these two suits. Now we've got an eight card fit missing the queen and an eight card fit missing the ace and jack. Well, in spades, um, we'd want to essentially finesse the uh, queen of spades, but we can take the ace first. So here you might play the uh, five of spades over to the ace. And in hearts, let's say that we played the four of hearts and we put up the king and this lost to the ace. Now the question of should we play for the queen of spades to drop or should we finesse? Eight cards missing the queen, we know to finesse. In hearts, we started with eight hearts missing the ace and jack. The king's lost to the ace. These are equivalent. In this one, we want to finesse. So you can see by remembering this chart here that with 11 cards missing the king or 10 cards missing the king, it's drop, then finesse, then drop, then finesse, then drop, then finesse. And then you can see that, well, if we've got those different suits, we can actually, as we play them, watch them transpose or become equivalent to the ones we know. And by remembering this, you'll be able to play a lot more suits in a better fashion. So let's look at another example. So here we've got uh, the spades. I brought this up earlier. We led low towards the jack and we lost to the queen. And then we got back to the south hand and we led low towards the king and we lost to the ace. We get to the north hand. We lead another spade towards the 10 and the eight. And we're thinking we haven't seen the nine. Should we finesse or should we drop? So this here is effectively equivalent to ace, king, queen, 10. Uh, so the seven card fit missing the jack. And what we want to do is play for it to drop. And I'll show you that. So let's just see how these two different suits uh, are similar. So here in the story I was talking about, uh, we played the uh, six and we led up towards the jack and that lost to the queen. So uh, here we started with seven, the opponents had six. They're down to four cards. Um, so here I'll keep the hearts the same. Let's say we play the ace and the seven. Okay. And then 
in the next story, we went back to the, the south hand. We led low towards the king. So here we play the seven of spades. We play the king and that loses to the ace. Okay. The opponents are down to two cards here. So again, let's just uh, pretend like we play another heart. So we lead the uh, eight towards the king. And now we get to the point of should we play to finesse or should we play to drop? In both of these cases, the opponents are down to two cards by the time we play uh, the final round. We have the highest card and we have the one below it. And in hearts, we have the highest card and the one below it. It's exactly the same. You can transpose these situations uh, between each other. And with seven cards missing the jack, we know we want to play for the drop. It's 4% better than taking the finesse. So in both of these cases, if you don't have good information, you want to remember that you want to play for the missing card to drop. Let's just bring the uh, suit back up from to start off with. So these are the two that I wanted to show are equivalent that after we play to the jack and after we play to the king, uh, they're the same and we want to play for the nine of spades to the drop. So the, what I recommended before is anytime you play a card and one of your honors loses to one of theirs, you can effectively drop down the missing honor part of that chart down one. So with seven cards missing the jack, we want to play for the jack to drop. But in spades, we played a spade to the jack and it lost to the queen. So now we go from talking about the jack to the 10 with seven cards. And then we played a spade to the, the king and that one lost as well. So instead of the 10, we're now talking about the nine. And here you can see that with both of these, playing for the final card to drop is better percentages than actually finessing. So you don't need to remember all the, the percentages, but hopefully you can see how all these seemingly unrelated suit co combinations all come back to that saying of eight ever, nine never. And if you can remember that general pattern and be able to transpose suit combinations like this into ones like that, then you'll be really good at playing lots of different suit combinations and you'll hopefully be taking more tricks. I hope you enjoyed this and we'll see you next time.